Okay, so we're starting with scalar multiplication and we talked a little bit about scalar multiplication yesterday. So remember, scalar multiplication is when you have a number that's multiplying an entire matrix. And basically we said that's essentially distribution. So let's take a look at problem number one because it's the first place that we're going to see scalar multiplication officially come up. This says, if A is equal to 4, negative 3, 1, 2, and B is the matrix 7, 3, negative 2, negative 4, what is 3A minus B? So they're essentially giving you like an algebraic equation. I'm sorry, an algebraic expression, because there's no equal sign there, so it's not an equation. An algebraic expression, and they're asking you to simplify it. Remember when you see capital letters, especially in the context of like this unit and the next unit, that means a matrix. So they're saying 3 times matrix A, which we know to be 4, negative 3, 1, 2, minus matrix B, which we know to be 7, 3, negative 2, negative 4. So when you're doing a problem like this, the first thing you would do is like write down what you're actually doing as opposed to the shorthand notation that's present in the problem. Second, these matrices are so small, personally I would never pick up a graphing calculator to do them. It's really just faster to do these straight up than to actually put them into a calculator. And you will find that my expectation typically is if you're dealing with a two by two matrix, so two rows, two columns, you're not going to be doing that in a calculator. But if you're dealing with larger matrices, that's when we start getting into calculator use. So this we're just going to do on our own. So notice typical order of operations. We need to multiply before we add or subtract. So we're going to start by tripling the first matrix. So what does the first matrix become? Claudia? So 12, negative 9, 3, 6, and we are still subtracting matrix B. Any questions so far? We're good? Pretty straightforward? Okay. Then we take a look. Now it's just a subtraction problem, and you know from the other day that when you're subtracting matrices, you're just subtracting the corresponding elements. Just make sure you go in the correct order because we know subtracting, subtraction is not commutative, whether you're talking about matrices or anything else. So what do we get for our final answer? Will. All right. That is correct. Any questions on scalar multiplication or substituting and simplifying? We're good? All right. So we're going to take a look at the next one. And the next one's um, still not so bad, but we do start getting into solving a true matrix equation. So in our last lesson, we saw like when there was a variable inside the matrix and we could just sort of set up a side equation and use that little equation to solve and find out what the variable was. This is a little different because the unknown is an entire matrix. Now my first question would be, how do you know that capital T stands for a two by two matrix? What about the context of this problem tells you that? Sarah, what would you say? Okay, so if I'm adding two matrices together and I get an answer that's a two by two matrix, I must have added some two by two matrices together. Because can you add matrices that are like different dimensions? No. So we want to be clear that if I see a two by two matrix, it's being added to something, I get a two by two matrix, it's pretty clear to us that that must have been a two by two matrix. So I'm looking for some mystery two by two matrix named T. So I'm essentially solving this equation for T. And there's a couple of different ways you could approach this. Some students see the negative two and then the matrix and they're like, oh, well, I should do scalar multiplication. That would be totally fine. Except if we think about this, where is that matrix with the scalar multiplier going to need to go in the process of doing this problem, Sarah? It's got to go to the other side. And right now on this side, it's negative. So if I were to do the scalar multiplication, I'd be distributing a negative. But if I just add that whole thing to the other side, that will become a positive scalar multiplier, and we're like less likely to make a silly mistake when we do that. So I would recommend we actually add it to the other side first. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add that whole thing to the other side. Now, if I was doing this out all by myself, I would probably not write that step out. 
But given that this is a note sheet where I'm trying to be abundantly clear about what I'm doing, I'm going to show every step of the stuff that I do. So on the left, I now just have 2 times the matrix T is equal to the matrix negative 2, negative 14, negative 2, 6. Now, I might just combine some steps here and do that scalar multiplication rather than rewriting that thing right now. So if you do the scalar multiplication, what does that second matrix become? Sarah? Yeah, 4, 6, 2, 0. Okay, now I can see on the right, I just have a matrix expression that I could simplify. We need to add those two matrices together. So we have 2t is equal to, what do I get when I add the two matrices together? Sarah? Uh, 2, negative 8, 0, 6. Yes, 2, negative 8, 0, 6. Okay, we're not quite done because we're supposed to solve for t, and right now we have twice t. Now, I will tell you, basically, division is not really a thing with matrices. We don't divide matrices. We can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them. And there is a way of dealing with matrices that fills the role of dividing, but we don't technically divide by a matrix or divide things into matrices ever. So if I'm trying to get t alone, my first instinct would probably be to try to divide by 2, but that's not a thing when I'm dealing with a matrix. So what can I do that would be equivalent to that? Katie? Subtract. I can't subtract. Subtract isn't going to be my opposite. Lucas? You multiply it by 1. Okay. So remember, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And also, if I can't divide, like if for some reason dividing is not an option, I can multiply by the reciprocal. That works for numbers. It's not quite that simple for matrices. We don't like stick a matrix in a denominator. That just like seems like a disaster. So that's not how we're going to deal with how we might want to divide by a matrix, but we can do it with scalar multiplication. So we're going to multiply each side by 1 half to get rid of that 2. So when we do that now, all we're doing is essentially distributing a half through the matrix the same way we would do with any other number. So what do we end up with for our final answer for the matrix T, Claudia? One negative four, zero. Yep, 1, negative 4, 0, 3. That is the value of that matrix. Any questions on the matrix equation? We're okay? Yes? All right. So now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Multiplying matrices. Now, this is how your book describes multiplying matrices. And I'd be willing to bet that if you start looking that, or if you even try to read it, your eyes start to glaze over and your head starts to swim. Do you all agree? Yeah, it looks a little wacky, huh? OK, so here's the deal. Take that second paper I gave you, the one that like has an activity on the front and a bunch of like typewritten stuff on the back, and flip to all the typewritten stuff. Just take a moment, just start reading it. I'm not going to have you read the whole thing. I just want you to start for a moment. Okay, as you start reading, I bet you're getting the same feeling. You're like, ah, uh, this is not really explaining anything. So here's the bad news. Typically, my Excel Algebra 2 students, they like to know why things work. That's actually a good thing. So one year I was teaching matrix multiplication, and students were like, okay, but why is that the algorithm? And I was like, I don't really have a good answer for you. I just like, when I studied matrices, I just learned that that was the algorithm, and I just learned how to do it. Nobody ever told me why. I was like, I'll go find out. So I like went home, did my research. What you see on that paper is the best explanation I found. It's not very good. So there's a few things that we study this year where you're at a level of math where you can learn to do them, but you have to be at a whole other level of math to understand why it works that way, okay? And my best like comparison for this is like, I've been driving a car for a really long time. I think I probably started driving 
like 1990 or so. Like, it's been a long time since I learned how to drive a car. I'm really quite good at driving cars. Like, I stay where I'm supposed to be. I drive safely. Like, I don't make people mad. Like, I know how to drive a car. But if you asked me, so when you push the button to turn the car on, because my car is one of those push button ignitions, what happens? I don't know. There's some electricity, um, there's some gasoline being lit on fire, and like stuff happens in the engine. Like, I know some basics about how a combustion engine works. I know that there's usually pistons, I know that there are like drive belts. Like, I know stuff, but I can't really explain to you how the car works. That has zero impact on my ability to drive the car. I can still drive the car. And as far as I'm concerned, it is someone else's specialty to know how the car actually works and to deal with it when it doesn't, and I just need to know how to use the car. Does that make sense? Okay, so the level that we are going to be at in Algebra 2 when it comes to multiplying matrices is we're gonna learn how to drive the matrix, okay? We are not gonna learn how the engine works because that requires like some levels of math that you just don't have yet. Does that make sense? Yeah, like to put it in context, we're spending like a week on matrices. I took an entire college course on matrices. And in that course, they didn't tell me how it worked. Okay? So just giving you the background that occasionally I'm going to say, I'm glad you like to know why stuff works, but sometimes I think you'd rather not know. And this is one of those times. Are we good? Yeah? Okay. So it's not that I am neglecting to tell you, it's that I think it's not in our best interest. Good? Yeah? Okay, so we're gonna learn the mechanics, and I'm gonna make it look a lot less confusing than that thing that your book wrote, okay? So that is what I can do for you here. I can make this not crazy. So we have an example on the back of the page, number three. It says, I have the matrix V, and it's negative four, zero, three, five. And then I have this other matrix W, which is two, two, negative one, three. And we're being asked to find the product, V times W. Now, you need to write yourself a little note. Here's the note. V times W will not be equal to W times V. That should be a little earth shattering. Why should that be a little earth shattering? Because normally, yeah, we have a property that does that, right? It's called the commutative property, right? You know that 8 times 2 equals 2 times 8, right? You know that. But what I'm telling you is that matrices, although a lot of the properties from the real number system also apply to matrices, some don't. And after we get the rest of the way through this note sheet, we're going to be able to come back and you're going to understand why it's not commutative. But for right now, I'm just going to start with, it's not commutative. In fact, it's so not commutative that not only will you typically not get the same answer if you multiply in reverse, sometimes you can't even do it. That's kind of crazy, right? So my other like motor vehicle example would be my family were big snowmobilers. So when the snowmobiles we have now, they have reverse. It is the best thing ever. As someone old enough to have learned to drive snowmobiles on snowmobiles that never, ever, ever had reverse, the first time I got in a snowmobile that had reverse, I was like, this is awesome. I can just like push it. The like engine like basically flips itself and we like go backwards. This is so cool. Because when I was growing up learning to ride a snowmobile, if you like, you know, were headed for a tree and didn't have room to turn around, you had to get off the sled, pick up the back, like change the direction, haul on the skis, go back, pick up the back of the sled, haul on the skis, and then you could go. Because there was no reverse that wasn't a thing. Snowmobiles were also much smaller, and you could actually pick up the back ends of them. Nowadays, not so much. I once tried to pick up the back end of my snowmobile. I cannot. It's just too heavy. So that's why we have reverse now. So matrices are kind of like snowmobiles. They don't have reverse when it comes to multiplication. You can't just change the order. They don't work the same way. Everybody good? Yeah, it's like motor vehicles A in Excel Algebra 2. All right, here we go. So we know that we're going to be very careful, and we are going to write the problem in the correct order. It has to be V times W. We cannot switch it around and make it W times V. We will not get the same answer. In this case, we would get 
an answer, but it would be the wrong one. Okay, so here's the deal. It's a little bit like a distribution problem, um, but it's kind of like an insane distribution problem. So here's how we go. We're going to take the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. So if I'm imagining my resulting matrix, oh, I got to make this much bigger. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I cannot teach this without colors. All right. You might choose to do it without colors, but I can't teach it without colors. So if we look at this, see how where I'm putting my answer, answer matrix, I'm trying to fill in the element that's in the first row, first column. So because the position is first row, first column, I want the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. Does that make sense? So the locations I'm going to use match the location where I want to end up. Good? At least somewhat? Okay. Now, it's a little bit more involved. So now I'm going to take the first element, which is negative 4, and multiply that by the other first element, which is 2. To that, I'm going to add the second element of 0 times the second element of negative 1. Right, and remember we had that conversation, we are not going to ask why, we're going to go, I'm just learning to drive the matrix. Okay, now, for the next position, okay, I'm going to pick a different color to underline where I want the next position to go. Let's do this one. So, what's the name of this position? Which row, which column? Row one. row one, column two, right? So row one, column two. Mm. So we have negative four times two plus zero times three. Take a minute and make sure you see how the pieces align. Are we starting to see the pattern? Yeah? All right, next. What would we call this position? Second row, first column. So second row, first column. So three times two plus five times negative one. All right, one last position. One last combination. So second row, second column. So three times two plus five times three. It is a lot, yes. <laughs> Ten different markers, yeah. They all have very attractive tests this unit. They'll be very pretty. All right. So then we do the arithmetic. Okay. So we do negative four times two plus zero times negative one. What do we get? Negative eight. We do negative four times two plus zero times three. Negative eight. Now be careful. Don't make any assumptions there. Okay. That is not a pattern. The first two terms don't usually turn out the same. It's just like something that happens in this particular example. Everybody okay? Yeah, no jumping to conclusions. All right, next, 3 times 2 plus 5 times negative 1. 1. And then 3 times 2 plus 5 times 3. 21. That is our answer. Is there a program on your calculator that can do this? There is. However, you are going to be required to do 2 by 2 multiplication by hand. So bigger sizes, you're going to be allowed to use a calculator. It is fundamentally the same algorithm when you get bigger. Um, 
but it's extremely tedious and just not worthwhile, okay? So when we have square matrices, like this would be called a square matrix because the two dimensions are the same, right? So three by three, four by four, five by five. There's a pretty straightforward algorithm where you have to start like adding some rows and you multiply on some long diagonals, but it's otherwise the same process. To me, that is a waste of time to do by hand. So we're really not even going to go over it, okay? On a test, you will only be asked to be able to multiply two by twos by each other by hand, okay? However, you do need to understand how other types of matrices would be multiplied, and we will get to that in another problem that we're gonna do, because you won't know how to set up a problem if you don't understand how the multiplication happens. You'll then be allowed to let the calculator do the work, but if you don't know what the calculator is doing, you will very likely set the problem up wrong. Does that kind of make sense? Like, if you don't know how to, like, program the thing, then it can't do what you want it to do. Lucas? Uh, can, can you multiply a matrices of different sizes? Yes, but not whatever you want, which is what we're going to get to next. Okay, so we're actually going to skip over the word problem at the moment because I feel like having the conversation at the bottom of the page would be worthwhile first. So I think this gets exactly to Luke's question, okay? Rachel, did you still have a question? No, okay. So notice here, you have one matrix, which is a three by two. Do you all see that? And they want us to multiply it by another matrix, which is a two by four. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I need to use some colors again. So I want you to watch this for a minute. If you think about what we did, remember to get the first position, we would use the first row times the first column. Are you all with me? So looking at that, would this be possible? Yes, it would be possible. Okay, because the number of columns in the first matrix matches the number of rows in the second matrix. I tend to refer to these as the inner dimensions. If I write the dimensions side by side, the ones next to each other need to match. If the ones next to each other match, then you're going to have the right number of elements in the row lining up with the column to be able to do the multiplication. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes, that makes sense? Okay, now here's the interesting thing. When we do this multiplication, the size of the matrix will be a three by four. So a three by two times a two by four will give us a three by four, which is a different size than either of the things you started with. So it's a little mind-blowing, but it is what happens, okay? And it's a pattern that always works. So you're basically matching up those interior dimensions and the exterior dimensions are what you would get. So here's the deal. What do you need to know off the top of your head and what do you need to be able to do in a calculator? For a problem like this, I would expect to be able to put on the no calculator part of the test. Can you multiply these? and you should be able to tell me yes or no. Does that make sense? And you should be able to explain why, okay? If I ask you to multiply them, I'm gonna put it on the calculator part of the test so that you can type it into the calculator. Does that make sense? Because although you can do this by hand, it's tedious and a waste of time. Everybody good? Yeah? Okay, so we're gonna drop down here. Oh, and then, so let's look at this. Let's say I switched the order and I wanted to do B, I wanted to do B times A. That would give me a 2 by 4 times a 3 by 2. Can I do that? No. no. That's just not even possible. So there's that commutative property being like the opposite of true, right? Not only is it not the same answer, you just literally can't even do it, right? Like my snowmobile that couldn't go in reverse. Lucas. I think I understand why you can't do it. Okay, what do you want to say? Because Yes. There's stuff that doesn't match up. If you try to multiply in the other order, see how I circled in black what you would have to be combining if we swapped their orders? 
And notice how not everything has a partner. If it doesn't have a partner, you can't do it. It doesn't follow the algorithm. Are we okay with that? All right. So let's go down and we'll look at the problem below. This says, does either product, AB or BA, exist and explain? So you're not being asked to find the product. You're being asked if the product is possible. So this is a non-calculator question. Does that make sense? Okay. So if we look at this and I say, I want to do AB. Personally, I write the dimensions down. Because when I write them down, it becomes obvious to me what's happening. Well, the, what are the dimensions for matrix A? Two by two. What are the dimensions for B? Two by three. So can you multiply these? Yes. yes. So we would say AB exists because the number of columns in uh, matrix A matches the number of rows in matrix B. Now, they didn't ask this, but I just want you to make a note for yourself so you keep thinking this way. The product matrix would be a 2 by 3. Okay, so we would give an explanation. Are we okay? Yeah? All right. So then if we go the other way, if we were asked about BA, I would do the same thing with setting up the dimensions. This would be a 2 by 3 times a 2 by 2. Does that product exist? No. So we would say this product does not exist. because the columns of B are not compatible with the columns of A, with the rows of A. Or you could say there aren't the same number of columns in B as there are rows in A. There's some variation on wording. As long as your wording is clear and I know exactly what you mean, we're good. Can you say, no, the product doesn't exist because the dimensions don't match? No, because if you say the dimensions don't match, what would I probably assume you were saying? Like the exact same dimensions, right? So I would be thinking you're getting that confused with the rule for addition, right? In order to add and subtract matrices, I can only do that if the dimensions match each other exactly. So I can add a 2 by 3 to a 2 by 3. That's not what we're looking for with multiplying. I can't multiply a 2 by 3 times a 2 by 3 because the 3 and the 2 don't match. It's not compatible. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes? Okay. So now we're going to use our understanding of this fact to help us set up the word problem. So we have a word problem in the middle of the page. It says a library has three printers. The cost of printing from printer A is three cents per page. From printer B is six cents per page. And from printer C is 14 cents per page. During October and November, the librarian recorded the number of pages printed on each printer as shown in the table. Using matrix multiplication, what was the monthly cost of operating the printers for October and November? Is everybody with me? Yeah, we're good? Okay, so kind of like we did yesterday, when they give us a table, we're essentially gonna turn that into a matrix. So I'm gonna start with that matrix. So I'm just gonna take the numbers just like they're written in the table, and I'm gonna create a matrix from them. As I'm doing that, I want to think about what these rows and columns represent. Each row is one of the printers. Each column is one of the months. Is everybody okay? Yeah. All right. So a lot of times I'll see students go, okay, so I've got three printers, I've got three costs, and they do this.
which kind of makes sense, right? They're like, each row is one of the printers. Does everybody see why somebody would draw that conclusion? Hold the thought for one minute. What are the dimensions of the first matrix I wrote down? Three by two. And what about the second one? Am I going to be able to multiply those? No. OK. So my knowledge of what's required to be able to multiply helps me to figure out that this isn't quite the right setup yet. I know I want to use matrix multiplication, but this setup isn't going to work. So usually the next thing kids try is they take that matrix and they move it over here. They're like, oh, I'll just change the order. Still doesn't work, does it? Katie said no right away because my inner dimensions still don't match. So Claudia just went like this and turned her hand, right? I need this to be facing a different direction. If I'm setting up the matrix, I can set it up in any orientation I want. Does that make sense to everybody? OK, so we're going to take this matrix. Instead of making it a vertical matrix, we're going to make it a horizontal matrix. And we do still have to double check that what we're multiplying makes sense, but you want to be getting your calculators out because this is something we're going to do in the calculator. Notice this is now a 1 by 3, and that is compatible with the 3 by 2. So at least from a matrix definition standpoint, it's now possible to multiply them. We just have to make sure it's logical to multiply them. So if I look at them, notice what's going to happen, because remember, it's row by column, right? So notice, 3 is from printer A, and 584 is from printer A. And then 6 is from printer B, and going down, 549 is from printer B. And 14 is from printer B, C, and going down, 159 is from printer C. So all of a sudden, we're realizing the correct things are being multiplied. Does that make sense? And remember, we then add those things together. So we're going to take the cost of each printer and total it up, and that's going to give me our total cost for October. So when we put this into the calculator, we're actually going to get what we're looking for. What size matrix are we going to get out of the calculator? A one, by two. a one by two, absolutely, the outer dimensions. So take a sec, do that in your calculator, and tell me what you get. Seven two seven two eight thousand forty four. Okay, so if we think about that, we've got the number of rows from the first one and the number of columns from the second one. So the rows represented the printers, but we've collapsed them to be all the printers, right? Because the question was total cost. The columns represent each month, and what we wanted to know was the cost for each month. So that's the information we just got out. But remember, the money was given to us in cents. So we would say the total, the printing cost for October is how much? $72.72. And for November is how much? $80.44. Good. 